I know you you plan it ahead, a, a really longer perspective. Yeah, you play really ahead of most of people, I think. But from what I see in the Dearden Station, as long as far as I really like it, but still I see it's not much utilized. Though I see not many people using that place. Even for the best bus trans transit system, right? I think most people will still t- either drive their car, or I just think it's it's pretty empty. Maybe it's because of the pandemic and the train train system too. You're, like who who is error, taking the train? The error that you're making is an error that a lot of us make about judging the future by what we have now. And that shows no foresight. We, in order to be able to plan for the future, you've got to project what the future is going to look like, and and the future is going to look a lot different than it does right now. We're in a bubble coming out of the pandemic, and the bubble has people going back to using their cars, everybody trying to use their cars at once, and the and the roadway systems, by the way, now are more congested than they were before the pandemic. And that isn't going to last because people aren't getting to work in their cars, so they're going to be forced back into mass transportation, and and they're going to realize that mass transportation has prepared for them, and and is is uh, providing them a very nice alternative, but within within ten years you're not going to be able to get on the freeways. Ten fifteen years, the freeways are going to be so crowded. That you're not going to be able to get your car on the freeway. That, that's was... so true with Shanghai. I used to live there and commute. It's as soon as you get out the door onto that, you know, the bridge, and then, then you're stuck. And so, I mean, yeah. If, if we know that it takes ten years to build one of these projects, we better be building them now, in order to avoid the cataclysm in ten to fifteen years. When you can no longer get people to work in cars, do you think、uh, Silicon Valley will be that populated? Though I I, I doubt it, because even Shanghai, they they have that elevated highway system, but they also have subway system, really advanced、uh, subway system, and still the traffic's always a problem. As long, but it's the main issue of、uh, density of population, right? But still, I mean, if that our area. Become that way, probably the economy will adjust itself. Like even some of the company will eventually、uh, decentralize, maybe, or or their employees maybe not very happy about their living conditions. They will find a way to to settle, and that's the way of American life, right? The, that means people vote by their foot or feet. That they, they just want, walk away. Do you want that to happen? I、do、think want, it may it may want, not be a big issue. Let's, let's, away? let's just say let's say Austin, right? It's a booming town in the past few years. Many、uh, tech workers move there. Probably some of them will move back though. But still, like Denver, people can do. More remote work nowadays, much more than、uh, three years ago. So it could be a trend. If that's the problem, why not we want to see that happen? So people here still will live the life they dream about, and the other people who dislike the the trend will move out. Why is that problem? Well, first of all, you're thinking about what's happening now instead of what's happening in the future.、Oh. And uh, uh, Silicon Valley is growing rapidly, even as we see employees discharged、uh, by the downturns.、Uh, the, the, the total employment in Silicon Valley is growing, still growing, and it's going to grow even more rapidly as we recover from the pandemic and and we adjust to the、uh, remote working. Now, let me describe. Let me remind you something. The studies are coming in now regarding remote working, and they're letting us know that the people that are remote working are not getting promoted. 
<laughs> if the boss never sees that's you, that's another issue, I think. Yeah. Well, if the boss never sees you, and you and you never come to work, then you're not going to get promoted because you have to be there uh, in the, in your group, developing the synergy uh, that creates intellectual value and and uh, and and rapport in order to become the boss someday. And I think as as people begin to realize that, they're going to recognize that they've got to be at work. Now, some people will, will not worry about that. They won't want to they won't want to promote and they'll continue to work remotely, and that's wonderful. But we've got to make sure that we accommodate the folks that are coming back to work. And they're coming back to work now in droves. So much so that if you are out on the road uh and uh during commute hours. All of the lines on your on your map in your uh, in your car describing what's congested and what is not are red. It's it stop start traffic all over the place from about three thirty to seven o'clock at night. That is only going to get a lot lot worse. It's not going to get better. And the way to avoid that, you know, think of it as a as a bag that we're putting too much stuff into and it's it's spilling out. What it spills out into. When the bag is is uh, is ready to fill up, is mass transportation, and when people get completely fed up with the congestion, and and burning five dollar a gallon gasoline, and and not being you know leaving home before the kids wake up and getting home after the kids go to bed, then they're going to be using mass transportation, all that can, and it's our job now to make sure that we provide mass transportation conveniently to as many as possible, so that those that don't want that terrible commute lifestyle can have the lifestyle of commuting efficiently on a rail transportation system. Can I jump in with a couple observations? I, I think downtown is, will continue to develop, continue to urbanize, continue to have high density housing. There are a good number of people who are here because we like the density. I want to put in a good word about living downtown. Now, there are a lot of people who like sprawling suburban, but there's some beauty to living in the really high density area. Convenience for one, you know, like a lot of people move to downtown because they'd like to have easy access to public transportation. And I used to commute uh, before the pandemic from San Jose to San Francisco. I have the option of driving, but I will always take the train because it's just so much easier. I don't need to worry about parking. I don't need to worry about traffic. I don't need to worry about driving. And Caltrain is actually quite functional like in the early morning hours. They have those, uh, the bullet trains that gets you from here to San Francisco within an hour. You can't do that in a car from San Jose, at least not reliably. So I, I think it's already happening. And what we're doing now, I think as we develop more transit, either through BAR, Caltrain, electrification, or high-speed rail is making that even more convenient, even more available. And by doing so, uh, we will attract more uh, residents to the downtown area and that will alleviate some of the environmental problems and probably more room for people who like to live in suburban areas. Um, so, and, and by the way, about remote um, working, I kind of thought a lot about that. I mean, the fact that we're all meeting here is a test of, testament to the effectiveness of remote working. But I think there's also, in, in addition to promotion, I think those are studies that productivity is just not the same if you kind of do a remote. A lot of kind of our productivity is driven by peer pressure, talking to other people, getting inspired, getting suggestions. So I think re remote working will, it's now here to stay, but it's just going to be a part of it. Just like cars are not, we're not going to drive away cars. Cars are always going to be there. But, you know, we're going to develop more options. When my next question will be, who's going to pay for that uh, public transportation, uh, right? It's the, the reason we talk about the Google campus is probably Google will uh, contribute a lot of money to, to the city or to make the, the plan as you envisioned happen. But uh, in the longer term, who's going to pay for the system? The transportation system will be paid for by the normal infrastructure investments coming out of government. The system itself, the development of the housing and the commercial on top of the system will help pay for that because those will be developed by developers who will pay for the right to use the air right. And usually it's a lease, a 50-year lease, uh, 
on the air rights. They pay a lease to the government uh, that owns the, the land. And that, that then goes to help pay for the transportation system. And of course, the, the people that live in those high rise structures help pay for it too, by paying for tickets and using the system. And so it, it, uh, in other countries, it uh, takes a great step towards helping to pay for the total project. Yeah, I think the, the example from uh, Tokyo or Shanghai, because in Japan or China, I think the culture play a huge role there too. Like in East, Northern East Asia, right? The culture is more, tends to totalitarian, but in a good way. I'm, I'm, I couldn't find the word. That means what I'm trying to say is people tend to behave the same. Like we have this agreement, social agreement. We want this happen and everybody will follow the rule. But in here, it's more like a republic uh, de democracy, right? So we have different voices. So that this democracy makes things less quick. Like things move sl slower and uh, people can always counter argue or have the counter attack sometimes. They, they will just resist it until it will never happen. So no, the, no, no, I can't. no, that is the way it works. There is there is a, a process called an alternative analysis and environmental impact report. But which, that that's also dictate from a certain like interest group, I would say. No, no? that's the government. The that's that that's the government requirement. Mm -hmm. California and federal government. California is the California Environmental Quality Act. The federal government is the National Environmental Protection Act, NEPA and CEQA, and they both require that in you when you have a complicated project, you do an alternative analysis. And then you do, and, and the government does this. Uh, it's usually done under a joint powers board of, of government elected people. You do an alternative analysis by with consultants. Uh, you then conduct public hearings on the alternatives identified and choose the alternative that is the best, all things considered, that is the best. And once you've chosen that alternative, you then do what's called an environmental clearance and you identify the environmental impacts and, and, and mitigate those environmental impacts as much as you can. And then you proceed with the project. That's what's happened with the high-speed rail project. It's taken a long time because it's a complicated project, but now they're, they're proceeding and they're almost done in the Central Valley. They're about uh, two thirds of the way done in the Central Valley. But do you think uh, the America, in America, the political uh, environment changed a lot in the past decades, or even the, in the past century. Uh, consider the inland city, let's say, St. Louis, right? I, I've been there. I see their uh, Union Station or Central Station. It's, now it's more like an entertainment center. The train is still passing by, but it serves in a totally different way as it originally planned. And because of that city, I also noticed downtown area sometimes got de-invested during the time of history, right? It, this thing, do you think it could happen here in the future in Silicon Valley? So we plan all this grandiose project, but to when you develop it and it built, it's got built, then in a sudden the economy changed. Maybe the high tech, will no longer be the ever-growing industry. So it got wasted. Do you have, ever think about that possibility? I mean, no, no, because we don't want it to be wasted. We don't want a high tech to leave. We want to maintain our industrial base with with the high tech uh, focus here. You no, know, manufacturing can move out, but we mm. want the high tech uh, research and development and and uh, uh, headquarters to be here, and and the way to do that is to maintain access by their employees, and to provide them housing housing, and the way to do that is infill with transit oriented development, because when you do that, you don't displace the people that have single family dwellings now 
that want to continue to live in their single family dwellings. So it's a, it's a logic process, step by step by step. And if you do it right, then we'll continue to maintain our, our core uh, Silicon Valley employers and, and see a livable lifestyle in the long-term future. So you, you said you want to have those R&D sector keep here. I understand mm -hmm. that. That's all we want to see. But those sections, sectors, let's say, usually hire high-paid jobs, right? They, they, they provide high-paid jobs. So eventually, you cannot a hold of like uh, as many as possible. It just those jobs cannot just expand endlessly. So, what would you like to do, Liam? I mean. No, 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 no. You got to answer now. If if you don't want to do what we're doing, planning for the future, a good future, then what would you like to do? I mean, the manufacturer eventually, like you said, will happen somewhere else. So, Not Silicon Valley, you cannot, you can only hold so many high-paid jobs, right? And the other jobs maybe will go somewhere else. So why? This assumption will hold true. Like it, we might not ever grow forever. So, would you like to plan now not to ever grow forever? Well, I'm going back to my point about the desirability of Northern California as a place to live. I mean, we are the top destination. Our weather, our natural surroundings that this this is really I've been to a lot of places this is places really special it's in parallel I I don't think there are many places that can rival us but mm -hmm. furthermore our innovation culture I don't think we're just talking about growing more Googles right you can only have so many search engine companies granted but look what we have created after Google we now have social media companies we have uh, crypto companies you know coinbase is a homegrown San Jose resident started a company and we were branching into nanotech you know biotechnology medical technology the key is we have world-class infrastructure in terms of university in terms of funding in terms of talents worldwide talents because of our great living environment so i really don't think silicon valley is going to go away anytime soon and, and furthermore i think i have never seen a city that kind of declines because it's great transportation city system. I mean, transportation can only add to attractiveness of a city. If we continue to build our mass transit, if we continue to build people so we can bring kind of cheaper labor from Central Valley, you know, easy communicating Sacramento or LA, I mean, San Jose can only grow. I really think it's one of the best investment that government can make for our future generations, other than the climate and environment, perhaps. Yeah, I'm not speaking myself. I actually just uh, be the devil's advocate. I've just seen like if any other counter argument can be made because from what I've heard, like there is a a bunch of community organizations, right? Like a better so the city organization. They usually what they're called the slogan, "Not in my backyard." That kind of attitude, uh, opposing the development of the city right they are the residents have this uh, resistance uh, uh, over developing uh, plan silicon valley is going to continue to grow even if you say if even if what you say is right and we grow and bust and, and become a not a desirable place to live then if that happens then the housing values of the people here are going to go into the toilet and your your home that you have now that you think is a million dollar home is going to be worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And if that happens, the reason why it happens is because we didn't provide decent transportation to get people to and from work. Now, you can take two points of view. If you want to be a NIMBY and say, don't develop anything in Silicon Valley because I don't want it in my backyard then then we are going to go into cataclysm and and uh, there is no way to avoid it because we won't be able to get people to work and and that's when industry will have to move away and that's when your home values will go away you'll lose the value of your home 
If on the other hand, you want to be a selective NIMBY and protect your area, remember there are currently 60 train stations in Silicon Valley. That's There's only a small group of people affected by those 60 train stations. The rest of the valley hasn't got any train stations and they would be serviced by buses picking them up and taking them to the train station. But the people around those 60 train stations ought to watch carefully as the uh, transit oriented developments are considered for their train station to make sure that they're, they're high density on top of the train station, but not high density that intrudes into the neighborhoods. And that isn't, the, that isn't rocket science. That's just good citizen action and and watching to make sure the development occurs in your train station area is is supportive to your community but if you insist on being a total nimby then you better sell your house now because it's not going to be worthless in 10 years when people move away because when people are moving away the housing values will go down because nobody wants to buy your home and and you have to realize it you there's no free lunch here, it, it, one way or another. So the what I hope, strongly recommend is that people consider to be yimbies. Yes, in my backyard, but if I'm near a train station and they're going to go into transit-oriented development discussions, then meet with the people and make sure those developments are conducive to your neighborhood and, and maybe are, are high-rise on top of the train station but not right up against the back fences. Yeah, I think that's a message I want you to tell the audience because as new immigrant, we actually just be here not for long. Like maybe some people got here 20 years ago, 10 years ago, but you have been here for almost all your life and you've been seeing this valley growing and growing, right? So that's the perspective we can learn from. Can you give us a more like a Silicon Valley long long term residence point of view of your vision about this valley in the future, like in twenty thirty years later? Well, in twenty thirty years later, my uh, little grandbabies are going to be looking for jobs in Silicon Valley and. And they're going to be raising their children. And I want them to be able to do that happily here in this valley. And and uh, uh, to do that, uh, they're going to have to have jobs here. They're going to have good paying jobs in Silicon Valley that they can have access to, which means we have to protect the employment. We can't scare out all of the uh, commercial and, and uh, uh, R&D and, 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 and industrial uh, opportunities here. Uh, and uh, and and uh, and we need to be able to provide uh, to do that. We need to protect uh, uh, housing for those uh, big facilities. Uh, one of the way of doing that is to create housing in other areas. Uh, North Central Valley uh, has is rapidly growing now, and they have uh, much less expensive housing than we have here. And that's why that I'm working very hard to get that high-speed rail line from uh, San Jose down to Gilroy, to, from Gilroy under the Pacheco Pass and tunnels, and out into into the Fresno area, and and joining into the the uh, developing Central Valley high-speed rail line. That's the way. That's the way China has done it. That's the way Japan does it, and the other great communities in the world. We need to learn from them and do it right instead of staggering it along. And and uh, relying only on terrible gas powered small belching cars. Right, Elizabeth, do you have anything to add? Yeah, my my vision for Silicon Valley View, I I hope our innovation culture will continue. Uh, will continue to encourage people to take risks. Will continue to provide these entrepreneurs resources so they can develop their dreams and make the world a better place. And uh, and I think transportation is really one component of the housing crisis, that as we build better transportation, we can move people around more easily without adding more environmental burden. Um, so I think these are all very um, 
passes moves. And I do think during my campaign, we're talking about policy, I think everybody kind of buys into that. You know, public transportation is go. We need more affordable housing, either through better transportation, transit-oriented development. And uh, and actually, Ron, what you said about you want your grandchildren to work here and live here, have good jobs, that was very much kind of one after one uh, San Jose resident when they um, we're voting for the final approval of a Google plan. That was what they all said. We want to develop this valley so our children and grandchildren can continue to work here, have good jobs here, and enjoy this natural beauty. Yeah, thank you to both of you. Maybe one last thing I want to talk about is my opinion about the railway highway system in China, because maybe it had also had its negative impact on people's life, which maybe in the West, people barely notice. It's like the authoritarian governmental style of developing things, right? It usually ignores individuals' right or freedom. Uh, the individuals can be harmed in a really severe way. So I think I liked this valley to be grow as you all envisioned, but I also care about the freedom of our uh, children in the future too. I, I think there could be a more natural or organic way to uh, develop that holistic view of the future life. Right, that's also my concern. But uh, so far, so good. I don't see any <laughs> that authoritarian thing happening here. But uh, real way, you know, it could be a dangerous thing. Even in the history, like the pri privatization of the railway development, right? It gave people a lot of power, and uh, things could run out of control. What do you think, Rod, about this per individual Rod, freedom stuff? Democracy is a device for allowing you to protect your individual freedom by electing a person to represent you in the negotiation of joint projects. And you can't do that as an individual. There are just too many people. And so in order to be able to focus the, the capacity to run big projects or big, big concepts, we elect people. And those elected people then are delegated the authority by each of us to represent our points of view in creating a future. And I hope sincerely that I'm electing people that will represent the point of view of transit-oriented developments that I, I described to you and creating the transit system and, and the future housing to support uh, a livable lifestyle in our valley for the long-term future. And, and uh, so democracy is, is exactly the opposite of what you were concerned about. Democracy protects your individual rights by allowing you to vest the responsibility to exercise those rights in an elected person. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, salute to you for your, uh, your life work and uh, do think we, we Silicon Valley residents should appreciate your service in the past. Thank, Thank you, Liam. Thank you for inviting me to the program.